Hi everyone, today we're going to be having a go at this. Now this is from um, IB&E Inky Butterfly. This is the Wonder Room and I have had a request um, to colour in some of the pictures or paintings in the room and I thought this would be a really good one to choose. Not for me because it's hard, but for you because <laughs> you might want to have some guidance on all this intricacy that's going on in the picture. So I've got my polychromos pencils out ready and uh, we shall have a go. I'm actually going to start with the flamingos because they're easier and then um, move on to the background and the leaves and the last thing we'll probably do is the um, outside because I've got to think about what colour is going to quite work. Anyway, let's go for it. Now these flamingos, I'm going to do them a nice pinky colour. just need a pencil sharpener. I've grabbed my we've got some more orangey pinks in the polychromo set this one is called dark flesh i don't know if you can see that very well there we go dark flesh i'm going to use that firstly on both flamingos i'm going to keep them quite simple now we have got lovely flamingo pictures that johanna's done for us in uh, magical jungle for example and there's some in worlds of wonder isn't there and uh, they're very pretty and but they're quite large so you can get all sorts of nice different color um, ideas in them but uh, because these are quite small i'm not going to go too uh, mad with with different colors i think um just sticking to a couple will work well and uh, i rather like this i like pink flamingos now i go to um a place which is local to us and they have flamingos and they're lovely and uh, they have some that are quite pink and some that are actually got quite a lot of white on them and they have others which are um, a lot darker sort of more orangey I have to say I prefer the pink ones the orange ones look a little bit fluorescent and a bit odd I don't know poor things this one's called medium flesh I don't know if you can see it but I always think it looks a little bit darker so I'm going to go for that one for their legs it just seems a bit more orangey to me and uh, we'll do that I'm not really sure what colour legs they have to be honest but anyway you can always look it up and uh, do what, what what's right but I think this will work and we've got a beak you usually got a bit of black on them as well, haven't they? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on with this colour and do a little bit on the ends of the sort of tail and wing part just to give it a little bit of um, con different colour, really. So it looks a bit more interesting and a bit more natural. It wouldn't the whole thing wouldn't the whole bird wouldn't be the same colour, would it? A little bit here and here. I'm thinking the beak is probably going to be black. Um, are they black? Are they white? Not very good at this, am I? Let me. I'm going to Google one. Actually, I don't use Google, but you know what I mean. Um, let's have a quick look. I actually, use a Yahoo search engine just to advertise yet another one. Let's have a quick look. Sorry. Uh, yeah, beaks have a black bit on the end. They're very pale pink and white. So I'm going to grab my black. You'll like my black. He's, uh, he's well used. And uh, just do a little bit on the end of the beak. It's quite hard to see for me. I can't get really close. I usually like to get really close. And of course I can't or else, um, or else my head will be over the in, under the camera. Which I have done before. But uh, I'm not going to try not to do today. I'm going to use this black just to add a few bits of colour or shadow here and here. Like this, maybe a little bit on the end of the tail. I can hear a really loud blinging noise. I don't know if you can hear it. I think it's probably my husband's computer upstairs. He has a habit of leaving a sound on, and when he makes an error, it goes bling really loud. I had never have my sound on unless so I'm actually watching a video or something. Okay, I'm going to go with the green leaves now. I'm not going to do anything too fancy with them. I think I'm just going to do them all in a block of colour. And I'm having a look. What I'm going to choose is this really dark green. This is cobalt. Turn it, hopefully you can see it. Cobalt green. Let me see it. Deep cobalt green, sorry. Because I think a bluey green colour 
goes really well with sort of pinks and uh, so that's what I'm doing, why I'm choosing this colour. I want it to stand out a little bit as well. I'm thinking about the background for this. I'm going to do that bit green as well. Because flamingos might be against the sky or in the water. So either way, they could be with a blue background, which is fine. But we have to remember that our, um, our wall is going to be blue. So if I do it blue, and then I'll have to be very careful to make sure that my wall is not the same shade of blue, or else it will just sort of, it would look like there's no back, back to the picture, you know, like we can see the wall through it, which would be a little bit strange. So I need to be careful about the colour I choose for the background. I haven't decided on what colour I'm going to do for the wall. It may be that I do a bit of pastel to make it easier for myself but I find it quite hard to get a really even layer of pastel um, which is good to, you know if you want I did one the other day which would have gone out already where I did a sort of C background in pastel and it wasn't at all even and it's exactly what I wanted to sort of mix some blue and blues and greens mixed up and smushed about to make it look really interesting but in this picture the wall needs to be quite even so not sure really I'm still thinking that through so there are those leaves now actually they could probably do with another layer of color so what I'm going to do is just darken a few areas of them and then I'm going to go over them in a slightly lighter green and we might just see these bits slightly emphasized that I'm doing now sort of overgoing I'm not going to worry about those little leaves it's not enough going on. So, what shall I pick? Oh, pencil wants to fall over. I think I'm going to pick this one. This is the dark thallow green. He's another little tiny friend. Um, he's uh, oh, we didn't do that triangle. Hold on. I definitely want to do that. There we go. So, does anyone find with their um, their pencils in the tin they get dusty? The tin itself is quite dusty. And I put the I've started I've cleaned it out and then I used to leave it open on my desk a lot when this is one of my only sets of pencils and it got quite dusty. So I cleaned it all out. I took all the pencils out and I rubbed it all through with tissue and things and got rid of all the dust. But it's still dusty. I think it's probably where I sharpen the pencils, they get dusty like that. So well, I'm not um, sure whether there's a good solution to that really. But uh, it just makes them look a little bit scruffy that they're in a dusty tin. I am looking after them. I do respect my lovely little pencils. And they're not all tiny, as you can see by some of the ones I'm using. But I do like to get my money's worth and not get rid of them too early there we go i'm happy with that now and i'm thinking to do for my background i'm actually going to grab this really light color this is the cobalt turquoise and i like it because it's slightly bluey green and so if we use this and i'm just going to try and do it quite lightly and i should do my wall in a different shade of blue um, it looks like it could be water or it could be sky. You know, it's not really sky blue. It's not really water green. It's somewhere in between. And I'm liking that, that you can interpret it as you wish, really. I mean, it's not a natural scene. These leaves are just hanging about in the corners of the picture. They're not joined to anything. So it's not meant to be completely real. So just trying to make sure I cover all the space with the blue and then thinking about the frame now I think the easiest way to do this frame will be to try and make it look a little bit silver um, it sound that sounds hard but I find I've got the knack of doing silver now and I don't find it I find it easier than gold um, well gold you see I do a lot of colors so I start with a dark brown a light brown three or four yellows so that's a lot of different colors whereas with silver i tend to only use a couple of grays 
so it's sort of easier because there's not so many different pencils to fiddle around with. We've only got a small space here. We couldn't fit all those different yellow shades and browns and things in, which is why I'm thinking silver. I also think it will go better with these cold colours that uh, we're using. I always think gold is warmer because obviously it's got yellow in, which is obviously our warmest colour. And I don't really always think about the colour chart and cold and warm colours too much but sometimes I do and I think that's why I you start to learn what goes with what anyway without necessarily understanding colour theory as you as you colour more so with the polychromas I always use the cold greys for silver and I would advise you to do that whatever brand of pencils you're using and I've got I'm going to probably only use two um, these two here and I've got a cold grey 3 and a cold grey 5 so we've got a little bit of a difference between them. if I think it's not dark enough or light enough I can add in others from the sort of scale but these are probably the only two we need and I like to start with the darkest one so we've got the cold grey 5 here first now have a look at the picture and think about where we need dark and shadow so under here right away we'll just go in under here with a dark yeah and around each of these because these little circles I feel are like little spheres that are sticking up from the frame of the picture so they in order to show that they're sticking they're sort of up in the air we need some shadow around them and that's precisely what we're going to do around everything I feel that this is sticking out of the frame as well it's like we've got a little bit of something stuck on you know, maybe our frame is like a mirrored frame and then these bits are mirrored bits stuck on or something. So uh, around here or with this darker colour and in any little gaps. You can see I'm trying to get into the gaps that are in between the circles and things like that. But if you're not confident, you don't want to press too hard, then that's okay because you can build up some more layers of colour later. You can always add in a darker grey if you want to, if you don't feel the effect is working. We may do that too, see how it goes. So once we've done that bit, we look at the actual, I'm not going to do any more with the spheres, I'm going to colour those with the lighter grey. I'm looking at this design, I'm thinking in the middle here, I'm going to make that look like it's sunken in, if I can get some colour to come into it. There we go and maybe this bit here a little bit further behind can you see where i'm going with that um yeah and along here just a little bit of shadow there and there and here and here now, I may add more in a minute, but we're going to grab the lighter grey. So, as I said, this is the cold grey 3. I'm sure this is better that way, isn't it? And I'm going to finish off this first. So, I'm going to go over the edge of that um, bit and then just take that colour out to the edge of the... I'm not going to leave any white paper. Well, there's obviously a bit, but not consciously at this stage on this part. So, I'm going to try and make that look quite solid grey. Now obviously we're trying to create an illusion of it's silver which means we have to have some shine in some places but I'm not going to put it on this background bit because these bits, the spherical bits and the ornate bits are closer to us so they're more likely to catch the light. So we're going to make try to make some shine from those. Firstly, what I'm going to do with this shape is just to bring that grey in a bit, so leave some white. Oh, sorry about that, people. My phone does like to ring, doesn't it, when I'm recording? I'm trying to have a look and think about where I was. Ah, oh, right. So we were just filling this in, I think, weren't we, and leaving a little bit of white in the middle for shine, and we're going to do the same on each of these. It's a little doesn't really show up too much because we've got all this... Um, the black lines on here but we'll do our best to leave a little bit now we'll do again on this one and just leave a little bit can you see I've left a little tiny bit on the top and I'm going to do the same here 
That was quite an interesting phone call actually. My son um, wants to be a helicopter pilot and I just, I had been in touch with a, um, a helicopter company school fairly nearby to see if he could have a flight, um, a, a training flight sort of thing where he can actually have a go at flying. And they do them, but I wanted to check the age requirements and they said he'd be fine, which is really good. So he'll be quite excited. Um, now I'm th let's get back to this. A little bit darker here. Do you see where it's sort of overlapping? There'll be shadow. I'm going to do a bit there and I'm going to leave it white in that center part. And I'm going to do the same on all of these. And what I'm hoping that it will do is produce the effect of a shine. It's quite difficult on smaller areas. Oh, I'm getting carried away doing this bit. And there, I'm going to leave that white on the ends. Um, as I say, it's quite difficult on smaller areas. Now, if you find that you don't leave white, um, because you've been a little bit heavy handed, your pencil isn't very sharp or your hand slips so easy not to. You can always go in there with your white gel pen and just emphasize that white. The problem we have with these books is the paper isn't white. So if we do go in with a gel pen, it will be very bright. But that could be fine. Now I'm not sure what to do with these circular bits. I want them to look like they're really high up. So I think I'm just going to put a touch of grey top and bottom. I don't want them to look completely white. We have to remind people looking or our eyes that there is they, there is some colour there. Now with these I'm just going to go around the edge. I'm going to try my hardest to leave a little white dot in the middle. It's not easy and as I say this is where the, you could colour in solidly and go in with your pen after see what I'm doing I think you can so uh, it's up to you really I mean I think the best thing is to have a go do it and just have a look and see whether it is giving you the effect that you want and then you can choose to go in with your pen now the good thing with polychromos is that none of the color transfers what I mean is with some pencils if you go over them with a white pen the colour of the pencil, the pigment, goes into the white and so you get um, either um, you either get the shade of colour that's underneath or you get a slightly different colour. For example, some blues go pink, some purples go pink, but with this doesn't happen with polychromos, the pigments don't come through. I am going to grab my pen. Oh, I'm sorry, I've made it all blurred. There we go. It's, it, you can use any pen. And I am going to go over all these dots with a little white. It's not working. There we go. And it is a very minuscule dot. But I'm hoping it just gives enough of a uh, shine. Like that, let's have a look. I don't know how much difference it's made. It's so wonky, aren't we? I think my camera's a bit wonky, to be honest. I don't know, I think I knocked it. And then you could do a little bit around here. I'm tempted to do a little bit on each corner here, but I don't know whether it'll really show up. Just an even bit. Hmm. Not sure, but anyway, that's the sort of thing you can do. So hopefully that looks a little bit silvery anyway. And the water part or, or sky part um, doesn't look too blue in the sense it's quite greeny blue. So if I then decided to do the background, let's say, in this sort of blue, it'd be quite different. You can see that. Okay, now how are we doing for time? I don't know because we stopped halfway through. I think I'm going to leave that there. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave that um, that one. And uh, I'll do, I've got another idea for my next one. So I shall hope you'll join me when I get, when I do the next bit from this page. Um, thank you very much for watching and happy colouring. <laughs>